My name is Brother Ken, and before I came to the program, I was lying in a hospital bed at Vanderbilt Hospital with IVs in my arms, um, going through another series of detox, um, terrible withdrawals, and um, in absolutely the lowest point of my life. My alternatives, at least in my mind, weren't very many. I had given up totally, completely about everything, including my life, thought I had no purpose. And then I had called a friend, and he asked me, he said, what about this other guy I've heard you talk about? And I said, why? And my friend Greg is a very, very wise guy. I mean, he's studied theology, he owns his own company. I mean, just, just incredibly smart dude. So Greg said, um, call, call John. He said, didn't you tell me about a year ago that, that he called you? And I said, yeah. He said, you call him back? And I said, huh? And he said, why? And I told Greg, I said, well, well you know, I was ashamed. I didn't want John to know I'd relapsed gotten back into my you know alcoholism and addiction and he said call him can just promise me hang up and call him right now now I hadn't talked to John in a year I called John I told him exactly what happened and what I was thinking he said well we moved from Franklin to Murfreesboro and I've got a um, I've got a, a new church and a new pastor, and they, they um, help or certain organizations. He said, I don't know if it'll, anything will happen. Let me call them. Promise me you won't do anything for 15 minutes. I said, yeah, I'm, in the, I'm laying in the bed. I mean, so I promised him. And then about 15 minutes later, that's when Pastor Travis Summers called me from a church down in Murfreesboro. And uh, I never met this man, never heard of him, never anything. He did a telephone interview with me, you know, and I, of course I'm, I'm weeping, crying, everything. That's when about 30 minutes later, a guy named Gene Garcia called me. Overly enthusiastic, overly over the top. Even in my, my terrible state, I didn't believe what he was saying. I wanted to, but I didn't believe it. He said, Ken, here's the deal. He said, um, he said, it's, it's a year-long commitment. He said, it's 12 months. He said, it ain't easy, it's a challenge. He says, but I can promise you, with everything I know, if you really, really want to change your life and you make it through the program, you can do it. It'll happen. And I said, something's got to give here or I'm gonna, just going to die. He said, well, you're going to go to Clarksville, but they need you to come right now. I said, ah. Uh. So you got to give me a couple of days, you know. And you know, and I knew that if you don't go now, the, the, the odds are you're probably not going to go. And that's what he said, and I knew that. But you know, I'm, I'm I still got an apartment full of stuff, you know. I mean, clothes, everything. He said you got to be there right now. I took an Uber back to my apartment. God, I was in a sad shape. And John met me there, we grabbed up a few clothes and we came to Clarksville. And then well, once I got into the, the center there in Clarksville, um, I mean, I, I don't, never heard of Team Challenge or anything like that. Yeah, I thought I was going to another rehab, not a Christian discipleship. I had been told, and I'm sure it was probably true, because everybody, I, I've never seen anybody as bad as I was when I got there. I mean, uh, they had taken me to the ER after only a few days. I was, I was in terrible condition still thinking about in my life. I stuck with it, and I stuck with it, and I stuck with it, and I stuck with it. It was hard, man. All I can tell you is, is that it saved my life. When you think you're hit bottom, but you really haven't. And then when you get to that point, I'm sure there, there is no other further down other than just to go all the way. I stuck with the program, and I, I fought it, and I battled it, and I felt terrible, and I was physically and mentally incredibly weak. Then after, it took me, I think, much longer than others that I've seen. It took me really a couple months. So when I finally s surrendered, it was hard, but it, but it was so worth it. And, and now, I, I've never, it's not like I've ever been, I, I believed in Jesus a long time, but I had, I had pushed all that away. Now, I, I really feel, I don't feel it, I know it. One of my callings for staying in this program is to listen and mentor these I'm, other guys. I'm older. You know, you come in, you're like, it's called, I'm 61 years old, and they call it Teen Challenge. Are you kidding? What am I doing here? I don't wash cars. I have people wash cars. And guess what? You wash cars now if you want to. Yeah. 
you know, you do you do what you got to do. Clarksville was a great training ground to get to Memphis. I've been here in Memphis a few weeks and I love it. What makes everything jive here is the people. And it's the staff is awesome. Of course some of my brothers came from Clarksville, the new brothers I'm meeting are awesome. I'm, guys are They've always, especially young guys, asked me for a dry. So even if it's something as simple as how to tie a tie. I've always um, knew that I had a calling to, to a pull for me to help people that need help. And, and so being able to talk to these people in Memphis and minister with them and the ones that will let me pray over them, you know, it's, more, it's as much or more for me than it is for them. And it, it's humbling. And, um, I know, I know that no matter what, at the end of the day, God's not mad at me. Maybe he's a little happy. And if he is, that's great. Because I've got purpose again. I have hope. I just had a grandson two months ago, my first and only from my daughter who I raised myself to you know, all but a couple years of her life. i got things to look forward to, and I'm going to be there for him.